So, uh, your excellencies and state secretary, Mr. President, uh, esteemed professors and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to welcome you to this evening in support uh, of the future of Ukraine. And I want to thank you all for being here. First of all, those of you who are here in the aula and also those of you who are online, a uh, warm welcome to you all. And um, Russia's uh, really brutal war on Ukraine has um, in a few days been going on for, uh, for two full months. And the reports are really horrifying. The uh, dreadful abuse and killing of civilians and bombings of schools and hospitals and theaters the imagery that's filling our heads uh, and our souls is really uh, terrible. And too few of us actually saw this coming uh, since the reactions uh, from this part of the world when Crimea was invaded in 2014 were not strong enough. And it also feels really meaningful to have this manifestation here at the Stockholm School of Economics today. Uh, and we deeply mourn, of course, the Russian invasion since we've had a sister school in Russia for a quarter of a century. Uh, and during 25 years, we have, through executive education and executive MBA programs, been true to SSE's values and had instructions based uh, on the ideas of liberal democracy and market economy. And we have been teaching SSE's core values uh, that are research-based, up-to-date knowledge in the subjects that we really uh, focus on here, such as economics and finance and marketing strategy, accounting, sustainability, management, organization, etc. So uh, SSE's values are based on the academic virtues and they are specifically abbreviated uh, in the acronym FREE, which is also sort of the theme of this evening and also of the network that the site uh, is, is uh, uh, orchestrating. But the FREE at SSE is an acronym where the first F stands for a fact and science based mindset. And SSE is a higher education institution that rests on scientifically produced knowledge. And the basis for knowledge and critical thinking are really factual. And the actual idea of higher education institutions is to develop students and of course researchers capacities to distinguish between different types of knowledge forms. And this scientific approach is really, really key to SSE. And in this world of, of fake news and alternative facts and the propaganda aiming to influence our perceptions of the world order, uh, in that world, a factual and scientific mindset is really more important than ever. So therefore, uh, basically epistemology and, and critical and analytical thinking play a central and explicit role at SSE and it's becoming increasingly important uh, as we see what's happening in the world. And then the same goes for the R in free that stands for reflective and self-aware and because again, more than ever, we need to sort of cultivate our reflective minds and try to uh, really understand the, the, uh, the, our own motives basically, our own preferences and attitudes and perceptions and values and feelings and very uh, apparently now, is that values, uh, they are more important the ever, than ever because it, basically the entire economic system now, including the sanctions, are basically today based on values. And then the first E uh, in free stands for empathetic and culturally literate. And SSE students shall really develop their empathy. Uh, and this evening's event is at its heart about empathy and solidarity. And the ones that understand and share the feelings of others will, of course, become better leaders, will become better analysts and uh, better citizens of the world. And an ability to view the world from somebody else's perspective is really key today, um, and especially in this, in this uh, world order that's now developing. And so this event is really an, an example of getting a better understanding of what is going on in Ukraine and how how the geopolitical situation will uh, or can be altered. And then the final E stands for entrepreneurial and responsible and are all about actively driving change. So uh, together with SITE, which is the Stockholm Institute of Transition Economics, and the Embassy of Ukraine here in Sweden, we are happy to see students here, I want to say that especially, and faculty, uh, and staff, and of course partners to this evening. 
And the objective of tonight is, first of all, to learn more about the impact and the effects of the war in Ukraine. Uh, and we will also discuss how we can support fellow students and faculty members from our partner school, the Kiev School of Economics, KSE, and Ukrainian academics and students more generally. So uh, Ukraine is, of course, now in urgent need of aid and life-saving measures. But it's also important to secure the future of Ukraine in terms of education and access to fact-based knowledge. So together with SITE, we've started the initiative Friends of KSE to support fellow students and faculty members at the Kyiv School of Economics. And together we will raise funds for their future work uh, and create supportive initiatives. And we have already started, I guess Tobia will say more about that. Uh, and it's my firm conviction that knowledge and science and education are really lights that must continue to shine through this darkness. And it's crucial that we support research and education in Ukraine at this point, because science and fact-based knowledge and high-quality education, they are really prerequisites for the long-term development uh, of any country, and of course of Ukraine. So, but on a more short-term basis, Ukraine now needs money and our brothers and sisters need help, support, and compassion. So uh, I want to thank you all for coming. And I'm going to leave the floor to Tobian, uh, who's the director of SITE, Tobian Becker. And Tobian, you're always doing a fantastic job, but it's been even more visible the latest two months. He is everywhere in media now, and uh, his devotion to Ukraine and the region is so deep. And I want to take the opportunity of thanking you, Tobian, really, uh, now once again. And I now also want to thank uh, the excellences who are here, the ambassador of Ukraine to Sweden and the ambassador of Sweden to Ukraine, uh, the KSE president, the state secretary to the Minister for International Development, Cooperation, for being here today. And I also especially want to welcome the students for being here. After all, you are the future. So uh, once again, welcome to this evening that's devoted to the need for academic freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. Um, I have a sense that I'm speaking way too loud, but I'm sure that uh, the sound engineer in the back will make me sound appropriately loud. Um, so welcome again, and thank you, Lars, for this uh, excellent introduction. Um, I understand that to many of you, both here in the room and, and following this online, this is a little bit of an unusual event in terms of what we usually organize here at SITE. It's not on a particular topic. I'm not going to show you any charts of, of ups and downs of economic variables, but we are really here um, to support the future of Ukraine and really as friends of the Kyiv School of Economics. This is the, the route uh, for why we are here tonight. Uh, you will hear some voices, both from Ukraine and here from Sweden and the students, very importantly. Um, and we will share our own ideas and thoughts about how can we actually best help build a, a brighter future. Our strong conviction that research, education, policy advice based on facts, that's sort of the future that is going to support Ukraine. Um, I just want to mention also that we have here at SITE and the Stockholm School of Economics been collaborated with the Kyiv School of Economics for around 17 years now, I think. Um, and we also have created, together with other institutions in this region, what we call the free network. Uh, by coincidence, the same letters as the school has for its uh, own keywords. But for us, this uh, acronym stands for the Forum for Research on Eastern Europe and Emerging Economies. So that becomes the free network that both the Kiev School of Economics and SITE here uh, is part of. Um, of course, now free stands for so many other more important things. Free to live in peace, free to make your own choices. And needless to say, Putin and his followers do not share this vision, and our friends and colleagues in Ukraine are now fighting the battle for freedom for all of us. <clears throat> so we are here.
We are here this afternoon to support our colleagues at the Kiev School of Economics. Okay. <clears throat> and of course, if you have known and followed what the Kiev School of Economics has been doing lately, they have themselves collected 18 million dollars, not to support themselves, but to provide medical kits, food, life-saving equipment, and all these other things that is keeping Ukraine going today. So this is what our friends at the Kyiv School has been doing. They have not fundraised anything for themselves, so that's why we are here tonight. We are launching tonight <clears throat> Friends of KC. We're going to support the great efforts made by the KC team in terms of education, research, policy analysis and fundraising to win this war. <clears throat> we will organize this in, in Swedish an ideal förening. It's a charity that, where you can send your donations. Uh, we're going to have QR codes for you that want to donate in your Swiss app. You can go to the website friendsofkc.org and you can find out how you can make transfers directly uh, to the account of, of this new organization. And just to be clear, this is now a Swedish charity organization with its sole purpose to support the Kyiv School of Economics and academics and students from Ukraine. So this is what, what you will be do donating if you choose to do so. Um, of course, uh, with strong friends, it's easier to make a difference. And I'm, I'm very happy to say that uh, we already have a very strong friend to the friends of KC. And this is our company Tetra Laval. Uh, they have provided a very nice start to Friends of KEC and, and the fundraising effort that, that we are part of here tonight. Um, I would like to read the message that we have received here today. And I'm quoting now. Uh, Tetra Laval is glad to have been invited to become an inaugural sponsor of Friends of Kyiv School of Economics. We have joined the many voices who are calling for an immediate ceasefire and for Ukraine to remain a democratic and sovereign country. Since the war started, we have, through different means, primarily for and with our customers, made significant humanitarian contributions. With our donation tonight of 500,000 euros, we want to look ahead send a signal, a signal to the future of Ukraine. We hope that many will follow us and contribute to this friendship agreement between SITE, the Stockholm School of Economics and the Kyiv School of Economics, and that the Kyiv School of Economics will become an engine for a new future." End of quote. I have to say that's an extraordinary start of a fundraising campaign. So thank you, Tetra Laval. Um, in the reminder of this evening, we will hear voices from Ukraine and from Sweden. And I'm very happy to say that our first speaker of this evening is going to be the ambassador of Ukraine to Sweden, Mr. Plachotnyuk. Please, the stage is your warm hand of welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. I'm ambassador of Ukraine to Sweden, Andriy Plachetniuk. And let me start at saying to express uh, our most sincere gratitude to all our Swedish friends, be it government, be it parliament, be it local or regional authorities, be it academic community, be it ordinary Swedes, for their genuine solidarity and true support 
for Ukraine during these darkest times of our history. Please be sure that this support and this solidarity uh, is most valuable for Ukrainians and will never be forgotten by my compatriots. Today we have the 55th day of open invasion by the Russian Federation, which has already brought so many sufferings, so many atrocities, so many deaths of ordinary people who lived and who lived in a, in a country, in a democratic country. And what the Russian Federation tried to do, they wanted to deprive us of our dream to live in a free country, to have our choice where to go, how to live, and what alliances to, to join. But they will never succeed in this. Because what we've seen within the last 55 days, we've seen total unity, strong support for each other when it comes to Ukrainians. Our total resolve and our total resistance to this evil. Uh, I am proud to be Ukrainian. I have always been proud to be Ukrainian. But what I see now, I see when people help each other, they trying to do their best, trying to give everything they have to their neighbors, to their relatives, to all who require this assistance during the times of war. We are very much grateful uh, to the Swedish government and academic community when it comes to their support and to the measures that were already announced in support of academic, uh, academic circles in Ukraine. Different funds, different projects in order to support the scientists in Ukraine at the time of, of war. We understand that the first thing that should be done is to bring an end to this war. But while making every effort to achieve this goal, we now are thinking about our future, uh, making plans how to reconstruct, how to revive our economy, how to find new engines of economic growth, how to bring investments and do many, many more things. How to bring a new life to, to our economy. In this regard, what is being done by our Swedish friends, by supporting these academic circles in Ukraine, is definitely very, very important. And every single program, every good deed in support of Ukraine, it really makes a difference. It really makes us stronger. Because we are facing hybrid warfare, uh, and we've been facing it for the last eight years. But one of the most important deterrents when it comes to Ukraine, it's not only our strong military and our democratic institution, but also the state of our economy. When we are strong with our reforms and we can do more for people and not only for people in Ukraine but also in all European countries. So once again, thank you very much for this initiative. Thank you for inviting me and once again, thank you so much for these generous donations and definitely we are very much grateful to Tetra Laval company and I think that many companies in Sweden will follow their lead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm hoping that we can switch uh, to Timofey. Are you with us? Uh, you should be on a Zoom link, I hope. Yeah, I'm here. I don't know if Excellent. you can see me. Let's see if we can get Timofey on the screen instead of us. Hello. Yes, welcome Timofey. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, you know, the war is something I thought uh, 
I would never have to live through in Europe, okay, in Eastern Europe, but in democracy, in a sovereign nation. Uh, you know, um, like, okay, I, you know, the 90s were difficult, the Soviet Union collapsed, and I thought that was over, you know, the hardship was over, you know. I kind of personal, a lot of our people have become, you know, trained in the West, they have become, okay, I got PhD in the US and then worked in Bonn and, you know, some sometime later in the US, but um, many of my friends or colleagues or peers, you know, they became managers or successful businessmen in Ukraine. Some some came back to Ukraine in academia, some left, you know, we, we were becoming international, you know. We were struggling. There were issues of reforms, you know, constructing a market economy, building institutions, setbacks, revolutions, attempts by our own citizens to become tyrants, you know, two revolutions at least, trying to, you know, not, not well, successfully not letting it happen. Uh, but in 2014, I kind of, you know, realized that the freedom is not free. And that uh, in 2014, in Ukraine, in Kyiv, downtown, where I grew up, people were killed because we, they were simply protesting against uh, the decision of our then president to stop or to refuse an association agreement with the European Union. And that's when I, I kind of learned, I think, uh, the very unpleasant truth that you pay for your freedom, for your sovereignty and independence in, in lives. But I thought that was it, you know, okay, there was the east of Ukraine, the Crimea um, situation, and, you know, we stopped it by 2016. I never thought that he would be bombed. And, you know, in, in 2022, I learned that really unexpected, surprising, really awful things can happen. And you can't really comprehend them until you experience them. It's you really have to wake up to bombardments. To it changes you, and uh, it's you can talk about it all all you want, uh, but it's a little bit like people say, like for mothers to give birth, you can't explain, you can't experience it, or to be, you know, bullied or to be discriminated racially or otherwise, unless you experience it. Sometimes it's difficult to comprehend it. And I think that's that's the case. You you know, I hope no one has to experience the war, but to understand the war, uh, one has to experience it. And th there comes my third point: that the war radicalizes people, and we need to resist that to stay human. And that's where culture, science, and arts come in. And I think that's why we have to continue to provide education, do science in Ukraine. We have to run conferences, we have to run seminars, we have to run uh, fundraisers and discussions like today so that we, we stay human. We don't become, you know, we don't move in the direction of becoming those sick people which came to our land who invaded us, you know, we don't want to become like them. So we have to live through this war, being normal. And I think that's why it is important to develop academia in Ukraine and connect academia with the rest of the world, Ukrainian academia. And that's why it's important to provide support to the scholars and students who are in Ukraine or who are part-time in Ukraine or who left Ukraine, but they can come back to Ukraine. Because the war is not going to stop tomorrow, not in two weeks, unfortunately. I think people who think, you know, it will be soon be over, I think they might not understand all the facts on the ground. So we'll live with that for a while. This war will change Europe, will change the world, unfortunately. And I hope it will not radicalize people. And academia can help prevent that. And so I'm very grateful to you for organizing this event. I'm very grateful to Tetra Laval for the contribution of 500,000 euros. This is really a big deal. It can help uh, the school run for 
you know, substantive, you know, months, if not half a year or something. Uh, and uh, this shows promise and hope and future for Ukrainian academics and uh, scientists and students. And I also, you know, just a side remark, I also hope we'll have joined uh, business education pro programs too. Uh, it's, it, it, I'm very grateful to you that you have been working with the Eastern Europe, with Russia in particular, but also with other countries through the SSC, through the Stockholm uh, Institute for Transition Economics, uh, providing the networks, providing the resources, teaching people, educating them, providing scholastic opportunities. And I also hope we will in the future be able also to have uh, joint business programs, not only research programs and all kinds of interactions with you as we have started doing. It. So, um, and my promise to you is that the Kiev School of Economics will continue to be the premier Eastern European institution, will continue to teach according to the best world standards will have the most talented students in the country and will be open to everyone, regardless of their ideas, based on their talent and based on merit. So we'll carry the very same values that you have been talking in the beginning of this event to Ukrainians and to the rest of the world, showing that the world could be different and that the violence and evil is not the way things are or will be in the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. Of course, I'm being a very poor moderator and not introducing Timothy properly, but now we have Natalia Shapoval. She's running the, the Policy Institute at the Kyiv School of Economics. Uh, Natalia, I hope you are here with us somewhere. Yes, hello. Hello, Natalia. Welcome to the school only virtually this time, but please, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Turnburn. And uh, yeah, I'm impressed uh, how quickly Swedish business reacted to this call. And uh, uh, it's, it's really fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, indeed, uh, me and uh, my team is working on policy research. So most of our people are in uh, safety right now, but uh, a few our analysts uh, uh, joined military forces and uh, they are very proud that they joined it at the first day because those who came to join military forces in Kyiv at the second and third day were not accepted because there were too many volunteers. So um, they are still in very good spirit and uh, they are doing okay as well. Uh, our team uh, right now is uh, basically focusing on what we were doing always. We are trying to help the government. Maybe conditions are different, but uh, in uh, every uh, aspect where we can support uh, them, uh, we do. Um, like we get several days, uh, Yesterday, basically yesterday, Ukraine completed the questionnaire uh, for European Union. It's kind of a first stage of uh, many stages. And the uh, Ukrainian government did a fantastic job to complete it over one week, while other countries were doing it for uh, almost a year and uh, we were helping them too. Basically, there are not enough uh, people and uh, it's, I, I'm really glad that we can contribute. And uh, it's uh, fantastic how, you know, fast it's been done, uh, even in small teams and people working from the villages like, like us. Uh, we also work on uh, uh, evaluation of damages made to Ukrainian economy. Uh, as of now, we calculated that um, the damages are around uh, $84 billion only to physical infrastructure and only to what's available in public sources. Uh, we don't know, for example, uh, every, everything about the military or semi-military infrastructure and also about energy infrastructure because it's a kind of confidential information, but I guess uh, the scale is very big. And then the general economic losses, 
uh, if we would take into account indirect losses or like investments that were lost or uh, jobs, the economic activity that uh, people could and businesses could have produced and they did not, it's around 500 to 600 uh, uh, billion dollars. Uh, so there are other estimates, but more or less it's um, uh, about the size. It's, uh, it's really, really huge. Um, and uh, it's fantastic that Ukrainian economy is still, uh, is still doing, uh, you know, comparatively well. Uh, the next stream of our work is uh, uh, was on sanctions. Um, so there are several groups in the government and Office of President that work on uh, analysis of effects of the sanctions, on uh, new sanctions, and uh, we like most on a daily basis analyze of what's the effect for Russia, what could be improved, where are the gaps, and uh, um, yeah. Uh, so I, I I hope it contributes, you know, to uh, all the efforts of many small ants uh, that uh, work on this. So. It, these are huge streams of work of Ukrainian government right now uh, to use this economic powers to uh, stop the war and uh, to reduce basically capacity of uh, Putin to be uh, so, you know, well equipped to uh, kill Ukrainian people. Um, Timothy mentioned uh, at the beginning several things that he did not expect. And uh, I, I thought that I would mention several too. So one thing that I did not expect is that uh, Putin will go as far as to torture people and to go to Kiev to do this. Uh, my expectation was that there will be uh, a war and that this could happen. And we've been watching the situation for some time, but I would never expect that right now there could be soldiers that could come and rape people and kids and like literally torture them. It's something that's really impossible to comprehend how this could be, like what kind of animals this could be. Second thing that I uh, actually was mistaken about is um, I thought that Russia is not Putin. I thought that there is like one man and maybe a group of people around that and uh, if if we just you know solve the problem of one person, then everything is okay. But uh, the, right now, I see that it's not true, and uh, it's also supported by polls and sociology, even done by Russians, but also Ukrainian groups through Viber, for example. And uh, this poll suggests that uh, support of uh, Putin is growing. And uh, some polls are showing that there are more than 70% of people who in different form to different degree in Russia support even use of nuclear weapon. And uh, more than 80% more than support going farther to other countries than uh, Ukraine. It's uh, needed for their something purposes. And it's uh, striking how people can be manipulated to such, deg such a degree. Uh, and uh, with this, I wanna say, you know, highlight how important is education and access to uh, scientific knowledge and to free media and uh, universities and schools that do not lie and just uh, put, and just don't manipulate people's minds from their childhood so that they can grow into independent free people. And uh, thank you so much. Free Network was uh, working on this and uh, Thornburn personally for so many years. And uh, we see that uh, Ukraine is uh, a good uh, student in this regard. And uh, this is an uh, uh, awesome team. And I'm so glad that I'm now with these people and uh, with friends in uh, Free Network uh, fighting against Putin. And uh, I don't feel uh, alone. Thank you so much. Over. Thank you, Natalia. Fantastic. Thank you. 
Now I have the pleasure to introduce to you Hanna Anisimova. She's a researcher here at SITE, uh, coming from Ukraine originally. Please, Hanna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear colleagues, friends, first I want to express my sincere gratitude to my colleagues and say how happy I am to be part of the Stockholm School of Economics community. A special thanks to my colleagues from Stockholm Institute of Transition Economics for the support all this time and the patience when I try to say something smart like now. But now I want to speak not only with my voice, but also with the voices of all those who will never speak. Those who have already died for European values, never even been in Europe, and from all of them, I want to ask just one question. What did we learn over these two months? What did we learn? It seems from the 21st of February, we again became students. Not only at the School of Economics, but at the School of Support, Friendship, Equality and Dignity. Because without dignity, any kindness is weak, and any power becomes cruel. You know, my uh, family now in Ukraine under shelling and bombing, uh, so if their destiny is to die, only my, my only wish is they die without humiliation, but with dignity, if possible, of course. And if my, our destiny is to live, then my only wish is to live with dignity, at least, Try to. Now it's very popular to compare this war with the fight between light and darkness. However, I see it not only as a beautiful metaphor. Actually, this is the principle of the laser in physics. I dare to mention here that laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, so stimulated light. In simple words, if there are many of us, we are on the same wave, focused on the same goal at the same time, then the power of our light becomes so powerful that it can destroy the hardest material in the world. The question is, who wants to be this light? Answers are in your hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Hanna. Thank you. Uh, we would have had uh, Yuri Garnyshenko from UC Berkeley here. He, he is one of the top young professors in economics, in macro. Uh, he's not going to join us now live, but he actually recorded a message that we're going to play for you. So a short video from, from Yuri in Berkeley. He's actually teaching right now over there. So please. Thank you for organizing this event. It's a great pleasure to be here, even virtually. Uh, I don't have words to describe the horrors of the Russian war in Ukraine, but I have many, many words of gratitude to our friends in Sweden for all their support over so many years. When uh, I look back at my career, I can't help thinking that my past was a small miracle. I was born in Soviet Ukraine with few prospects to learn modern economics, let alone become a professor in Berkeley. But this miracle was made possible by the Kiev School of Economics. Being there was transformational for me. It was like a dream. I traveled to Mars. But the school was a miracle too. Just imagine how hard it was to build a modern university in post-Soviet Ukraine. And yet it happened. It happened because many people in Sweden were willing to give their hand, their hand of support to grow this institution to stay committed to the school in the darkest hours, to generally support it in so many ways, with their time, with their networks, with money, with everything. The school in Ukraine will be forever grateful for this generosity and commitment. One day there will be a book describing the history of the school, how the school changed Ukraine, how fundamental 
The school is for the fabric of Ukraine society. And that book is going to have a very special place for our Swedish friends. It will be a long chapter with many names and many stories. We all know that friend in need is a friend indeed. Sweden is a true friend at every level. And I know that I can count on this friend now to continue to support the small wonder called the Kiev School of Economics in the most difficult time. Thank you again for participating in this event and thank you for having me here. So now we're going to change over to hear some Swedish voices in support of Ukraine. And I hope that we have uh, online State Secretary uh, to the Minister for International Development Cooperation, Jenny Olsson. Let's see if we get the right... Yes, I'm here. here. <laughs> I think you heard the, the challenge now from Yuri and everyone else, how we, we can support uh, Ukraine. So the floor is yours. What's the government thinking? Well, uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for uh, inviting us. I'm really uh, sorry I couldn't be uh, at the Stockholm School of Economics, uh, but I'm really happy to join all of you uh, um, via this link. And I'm especially grateful uh, to have been able to listen to testimonies from Ukrainian colleagues. Uh, I think I speak for, for uh, many of us when I say that the Ukraine and its people are really in our thoughts uh, every day. So uh, we really welcome uh, this initiative to support academia in Ukraine. Uh, you really have an important role to play in these difficult times. Uh, the Swedish government is really proud to support Kiev School of Economics through our long-term support to site which amounts to a 9 million Swedish krona yearly. The Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, SIDA, also supports uh, the free network, including also the Kiev School of Economics. Another example of our cooperation with the Ukrainian academic world is the ongoing SIDA program to support Ukrainian and also other Eastern European students with scholarships to study in Sweden. So, um, it's really hard to grasp and, and accept uh, the reasons why we are gathering for this event. Um, war has really returned to Europe. Russia's unjustifiable invasion of Ukraine, a gross violation of international law, is undermining European and also global security and stability. The reports and the, the images the, of brutal attacks on, on civilians, besieged towns, destroyed hospitals, schools, homes, and infrastructure, and also millions of people uh, being forced to flee their homes, it, it's nothing but heartbreaking. Uh, Sweden and the EU, uh, we stand in unity together with uh, international partners in our unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. And the EU, in coordination with our partners, has adopted massive sanctions against Russia and its compliance Belarus. Together, we are working for further measures to increase the pressure on Russia to end its aggression. EU support to Ukraine is also being ramped up. Sweden continues to push for further sanctions against Russia and for increased support for Ukraine. Sweden is uh, one of the largest uh, bilateral and multilateral donors to Ukraine. We have been a reliable supporter of Ukraine's reforms since the 1990s. And we will, of course, continue to be so uh, through good times and, and bad times today and tomorrow. So uh, since February 24th, we have allocated vast humanitarian support, large financial support, as well as historic, at least from a, from a Swedish perspective, military support. We have so far increased our humanitarian support with the 775 million Swedish krona since February 24th. Sweden and Poland will also co-host an international donors conference for Ukraine on May 5th to ensure necessary funding for the humanitarian response in Ukraine. And Sweden, we stand ready 
to increase our support even further. And we will be honored when the time comes to be part of the re reconstruction of a free and democratic Ukraine. And lastly, the importance of academia, of independent universities and research institutions. For any democracy, this cannot be overstated. Kiev School of Economics and also other academic institutions in Ukraine have a key role to play here, not least in the future post-conflict phase to help ensure effective, inclusive and sustainable reconst reconstruction processes. So uh, despite the horrible reasons behind this event today, it feels truly hopeful to also share this evening with all of you. The resolve of the Ukrainian people is really remarkable. Uh, you have many friends, as we are reminded again tonight. And we from Swedish side will really continue to support you in defending your democracy and your freedom. So thank you very much for inviting us to this event. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, and now, absolutely not uh, least, but last in this round is going to be Anders Palsov, my good friend. He's the president of SSC Riga and SSC Russia. Uh, he's been really one of, of the prime people involved in building uh, education and research and knowledge in, in the transition region. So Anders, please, the floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for, for the nice words. So good evening, everyone. And uh, yeah, I would say it's a bit difficult to, to stand here after the emotional statements by Timothy, Natalia and uh, Hannah. So I will try to do my best and say a few words about what we are doing in Riga in cooperation with our colleagues at SITE and of course also in cooperation with the KSE colleagues and friends. So we more or less right after the outbreak of the war we joined forces with a free network to support KSE realizing that faculty, staff and students might have to leave the country and so some of them did we heard quite a few decided to stay and serve the country from there we realized that we have a space we have academic facilities we have dormitories so we've taken on roughly 20 persons right now from kse be it faculty staff and students and we are ready to take on more of them and happy to see that some of the students are very much appreciating our library some of them are working already now as research assistants and i was in touch with the latvian central bank last week and they are willing to offer paid employment to master students and above if there is a need for for making some money I guess online considering leaving or having left Ukraine you are more than welcome to Riga and get in touch with me and I will help you to find the right persons so we're working on this with site with the KSE we are also a school that started Riga started in 1994 so we have considerable experience working in the neighborhood and thanks to support from Swedish government we had a generous scholarship program between 2010 and 2017 that gave a number of Eastern Partnership students, predominantly from, from Ukraine, Belarus and Moldova, an opportunity to study in, in Riga. So we have an alumni network, but we also have an experience working with Ukrainian students. And currently we have 15 Ukrainian students in a group of around 400 students. Uh, 13 of them are in Riga, two of them are males, and uh, at least one of them doing his uh, military service, so to say, right, right now. The other one, I do not know about what he's doing. 
So that is what we have in Riga in terms of the Ukrainian students. We also realized and we also saw it that, like Sweden, Latvia accommodated or is currently accommodating a number of uh, Ukrainians. We realized and we tried to reach out and successfully, I said, we did reach out to young Ukrainians, females that left university, not KSE, but other places. So we have a few of them now being some sort of special exchange students at SSE Riga, uh, being given the opportunity to take courses, but again, having access to the academic infrastructure, in particular library, and being able to work on their thesis. We also, working together with the Latvian government on the scholarship program for Ukrainians coming uh, in exile, coming to SSE Riga and hope to see a few of them uh, already this, this autumn. All this has been kind of, I, I would say for all students, we are a small school, this has been a overwhelming experience and, and uh, we've seen it in the community, the community among students, but also our alumni community, the strong commitment, particularly from the Baltic students, and they know what, like, they know they've been through Soviet occupation, so they know what this is about. So we've seen students contributing, but we've also seen a lot of support from alumni. So just to give you one example, the rather small alumni community from Estonia managed to raise 15,000 euros in one week for, for supporting Ukrainian students. So being part of Stockholm School of Economics, spending most of the time east of Stockholm, I'm anyway proud to be here and very happy to be here and also with a very clear purpose. We heard it from Timothy and we heard it from, from other speakers this evening that with the aim of when the country is ready to have clever people coming back and taking Ukraine further. Thank you very much and thanks for the generous donation from Tetra Lava. Now, time for the really exciting part of this uh, evening. Uh, let me invite up on stage, not the future of Ukraine, but pe perhaps the future of Sweden. Uh, Vilma, please. Uh, Vilma is the president of the student association here at the school. She's going to be moderating uh, some voices from students uh, in this. Please, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much, Tobian, for that presentation. Um, and I just want to thank all of the speakers who've been here today. It's been hard to listen to at times, um, but this is what we need. Um, and I will be joined here today by two students here and also two students on Zoom. Um, so I want to invite you up right now, Victor and Lada. And then we also have Ilya and Yevenia through Zoom. Welcome, you guys, as well. Um, and um, these are students from both SSE Riga, um, from here at the Stockholm School of Economics, and also from the Kiev School of Economics. Um, so I just want to start by asking you all to give a brief presentation of yourselves. And we can start by you, Ilya. Hey. Hi, everybody. I hope you hear me well. Uh, today I'll tell you a little story. Uh, yesterday I've had a conversation with, uh, with my girlfriend and she told me that uh, when she was a child, uh, her family uh, could not afford uh, to buy a doll for her that she really, that she really desired. But uh, today Ukrainian children does not dream about dolls. They dream that shelter where they hide from Russian missiles and bombs is strong enough. They, they pray that the Russian soldier will stop raping their mom in front of their eyes. And the most cherished dream for them 
is to wake up tomorrow. Definitely uh, using the strong academic evidence, we need to refresh, to redevelop to the future of uh, economical, financial, and political relationships in Europe. But it will be tomorrow because today we have the war. We have the war with thousands of civilians martyred and killed. And from my point of view, today we have to stop the war. Personally, I've, I have to be in uh, to Russia several times. I've had a lot of friends from Russia, pretty adequate young people like us. And from my personal, uh, from my personal poll, if I could say so, the 40% of them support the war in Ukraine. They support the actions of the tyranny, of the dictatorship, not of the democracy. And from their point of view, they should, their troops, their army should not stop in Ukraine in case of our defeat. They want, uh, they want to conquer not only Ukraine, they want to conquer the Baltics, the entire Europe, the Poland, the Germany definitely, and probably Sweden, etc. This is the mindset. And from this point of view, this is not Ukrainian war only. This is our war, where Ukrainian soldiers protect not only the children of Ukraine, they protect the children, they protect the future of the entire Europe. They are heroes, not us. And do the heroes need help? Definitely they do. And we, and we have to help them. As uh, at the beginning of the event, somebody has mentioned that the key C, thankfully to the team of E, has created the, the fund where we have created, we have uh, uh, raised the 18 millions of, uh, of dollars. We, the fund has already delivered more than 5,000 of uh, ballistic vests, of helmets, and of uh, medical kits to the front lines of this terrible war. And if some of you personally has an intent to support our heroes, to really protect the, the future, to really protect the democracy, not only of Ukraine, but also of the Europe, we will, be helped, we will be happy to help you to do so. And in the end, uh, I, would say, I would say that just two months ago, nobody and me personally did not believe that the war could happen in Ukraine. And the core note, from our experience that each Euro European country should make from my personal point of view, that if, that if you don't think on war today, it will knock to your door tomorrow. Thank you. Stand with Ukraine, support Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Yes, thank you so much, Ilya, for that. Um, Yvenia, do you want to tell us a bit about what your situation looks right, like right now? Well, yeah, my name is Yvenia. I'm a second year student uh, of um, MA program in economic analysis in KSE. I'm also a class representative, teaching assistant, and grading teaching assistant uh, in some courses in KSE. And currently I'm uh, in Riga. And um, first of all, I want to express my deep gratitude to SSE, to SSE Riga and the um, Student Association for 15 Ukrainians who live here for free. And we do appreciate it. And um, your care can be clearly described with uh, my small short story, but um, I came here with my small cat, Fiona, to Riga, and uh, there were many problems because of that on my way, but you solved all of them, and um, I felt not alone, and even when we arrived late at night uh, to dorm, we saw a cat toilet, litter, and food under the door, and it was so sweet, and um, I was feeling that um, all the people here are really caring, but not concerned about our problems, and uh, I can't even understand um, how feeling people uh, in many other cities in Ukraine and uh, as you see from my red face, I still didn't learn how to behave when there is a war in your country, when uh, there are many realities, uh, when uh, people die every day and uh, like you send uh, your last money to uh, 
Ukrainian army and you try to be useful at least somewhere, at least somehow. And uh, as you see, you don't know how uh, deep you can feel uh, that pain and uh, how to react to this. Thank you, Ivania. Uh, Lada, do you want to tell us a bit about how your last few months have looked like? Yeah, my name is Lada. I am a soon-to-be graduate of Stockholm School of Economics in Riga. Proud to be here. And I do believe, as the rest of our speakers, that stories tell more than numbers. And I wanted to tell you the story of how I evacuated from Kiev when the war started. There are absolute beliefs in your life, things that you do not challenge on an everyday basis. Your calendars can be as booked for weeks as mine was on February 23rd, because I believe that the probability of me waking up to war is approximately the same as the probability of the sun not coming up the next day. I woke up on February 24th from the sound of explosion. For a minute I thought that I heard it in my dream, but then it repeated again and again and again. I came to the window in the apartment I was renting in Kiev to see a flash of light on the building in front of me and then hear another sound of explosion. Within five minutes, social media informed me that the war in my country has started. The next 72 hours were a nightmare. My friend's family took me in. We could not evacuate during the first day due to the traffic in Ukraine. Kiev is a big city and all of those people were trying to save their lives trying to drive out of Kiev and move to Western Ukraine, which was considered to be safe at the moment. The next night we spent at a bomb shelter, running down at 3 a.m. Uh, from 15th floor from my friend's apartment uh, because of the first uh, siren going off in Kiev. Then the next day at 6.40, her father said that in case we did not leave the apartment by 7 a.m., we would not be able to escape Kiev as the tension was rising. The next 21 hours we spent in traffic trying to get from Kiev to Lviv to my other friend's house. Usually such road takes seven hours. While leaving Kiev, we were leaving to the sounds of explosions. I remember crossing a bridge and there was one explosion relatively far and then another one that shook the windows of the car and then I realized that we might not survive this. As I say when I tell this story, that you tend to reconsider the reality of the situation when there is a tank driving by you. And I saw four of them with young men my age getting ready to defend their country. I think one of the scariest moments in my life was when we were standing in traffic in the middle of a field at night we spent four hours crossing a two kilometer range of the road and we had our windows rolled down like that to hear the situation around and then in dead silence we heard the sound of a plane and then a the sound of a rocket. In those 30 seconds I realized that my grades don't matter, <laughs> that my achievements don't matter and the only important thing is preserving the life. <sighs> and preserving the reality of democracy and the freedom of choice. Instead of hoping to get out alive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> At night, at 2 a.m., we reached my friend's house, we stopped for two hours, and then we went to the border to a 26-kilometer automobile queue that we had to cross. There were people walking with kids, with the only things that they had left on them, with just a backpack. We were helped by a local to reach the border, and then we stood there for 17 hours overnight. After approximately six hours of standing in a queue, we started volunteering with a 15-year-old sister of my friend. 
We were helping mothers with kids find their ways across the border, trying to collect people that were starving, trying to help people that were cold, trying to translate to international students what was happening, and trying to help the workers on the border to communicate the actions that should be taken by the people that were trying to cross. On the other side, after we were able to cross, I received help from my friends that I met at SSC Riga three years ago, and I'm proud to call those people my family. <laughs> I wanted to say that my voice is one of the millions of Ukrainian voices, and my story is one of the millions of people that were able to flee Ukraine. And I need you to remember that the people that were forced to leave Ukraine cannot be diminished to the term refugee. These are researchers, entrepreneurs, doctors, professors, businessmen, and other bright and talented individuals that need your support as never before to rebuild the future of Ukraine after the war is over. I hope that we will be able to find this support in you. Thank you. Thank you, Lada. Victor? Yeah. You started an initiative a month ago, together with some fellow students here from SSE to help Ukraine. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, I got uh, two wake-up calls. <coughs> Excuse me. The first one was uh, on, on the Thursday when the war broke out. I came to my grandmother's house. She's born 1939 in Finland in a sauna during wartime, the Second World War. And uh, when I got to her home, she was crying and she told me that uh, it has been an invasion into Ukraine. So I quickly realized, okay, this is not good. She is a war child, she's lived through it. Um, the alarms went off. Then on the Saturday, I was sitting right here in the atrium, uh, scrolling through Instagram, and I saw this post of uh, this medical student that was supposed to graduate this summer holding a fully automatic weapon. And uh, to me, I just couldn't take it, basically. So my, my mind started going off, and I, I, I like, even though I've never experienced war, know anything about war, uh, I, was, I was just thinking about the, the human aspect of it. And especially since I, I read that uh, crossing the main border through Medica, people had to stand, wait in line for 65, 75 hours. It was just increasing. More and more people flowing in. And I realized, okay, so what can I do? and what, how can I possibly maximize the effects, sort of, to do something, even though what I can do is basically nothing. Um, so, so what happened was that I called my friend who has a freight company, asked him about the situation, driving a truck down to Poland on the Sunday, and then I started gathering friends uh, to, to help with this soon-to-be initiative. And then in more or less uh, 48 hours, we managed to raise the 125,000 uh, kronas from uh, partners, companies, uh, who we reached out to. And from the public, we opened a Swish account in, in my name so we could accept donations. We, I think we, re, uh, we um, raised uh, 235,000 uh, Swedish crowns. So, it w and throughout that, because we kind of thought that it takes some time for humanitarian efforts to get to the location, establish themselves, and so forth. And uh, as the days went on that first week and things just got worse and worse, we realized that uh, it's important to act quick and fast in terms of basic necessities. So medicine, tampons, panties for women, because the only people coming into Europe were women and children. And I'm raised by a single mother, and I feel strongly for uh, mothers and uh, 
uh, it's unimaginable to be in that situation. Uh, yeah. So uh, on the on the Thursday, exactly a week after the war, we went down with the truck, and then we had a car. It was me and four other students, and uh, we got down to to Medica, the the border crossing in in Poland, and delivered the necessities to the women and children's uh, center. And uh, we also got to see kind of firsthand. The speaker said it: "You don't understand war." until you experienced it. We didn't experience it because we weren't in Kiev or on the front line or anything like that, but we could feel it in the air. And seeing a shopping mall completely emptied with signs for babies zero to two years old, four to six, and it's just filled with kids in heating blankets, and it's just women and children, is... Uh, it, it, I, I, it's, it's very hard to kind of digest. Um, and it, it, I, I thought that we all knew that the, the cost of war for society is far too great. Yet something like this happens, uh, which is uh, completely and utterly insane. Um, but yeah, so, so we, we did that, delivered that, got back safely. And uh, we donated 10,000 sec to this initiative, and the rest we will donate to the Omadit Pediatric Hospital. Is that correctly pronounced? <laughs> uh, which is a children's hospital in, in Kiev. Uh, but yeah, we, we just tried to do our part and kind of hope that we would spark other initiatives uh, started from students or other schools or you name it. Thank you, Victor. It's a great initiative, of course, and we also want to spark interest. Um, so my next question to basically all of you um, is what we can do to help as a school and as a student association. What can we do? What can we do to help you? you ready? Lada, you can go. Okay. Well, I think there are several sides to the help that can be provided. And really grateful for the help that has been done. Again, uh, my friends from Kiev School of Economics already mentioned about the support provided by Stockholm School of Economics in Riga and about the placement of students. I believe that the two sides are the disease and the symptoms of it. The symptoms would be the people coming to Europe because they don't have a place to live anymore, because they've lost their families, because they've lost their jobs. And it's definitely important to help those people that have been left without anything, which could have been me, which could have been any one of us, if we were back there. But I think that the biggest support that you can provide is to heal the cause of the war, to support the people fighting there in Ukraine with medical, uh, with any, any kind of things or items that can be used to support the defeat of the problem because then once the peace is established all those people will be able to return back home all those people that i know my colleagues that were forced to flee kiev as soon as kiev was freed from uh, russian troops they went back people want to go home <laughs> and i think that the biggest support that you can provide is provide them with the opportunity to do so by helping us defeat the common the common enemy and helping us go home. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, one more Yvonne comment. and Elia, do you have anything to add? Yeah, one more comment from my, my side, as Timothy has already mentioned, that uh, the reality is that the war is really begins today. It's, this is not the short and fine enterprise. This is the long-term thing. And uh, there are two, there are three options, I would say. Um, option number one, to remember that the war is still going because one month, two months will last and everybody will forget. And this is the most dangerous thing that could ever happen. 
that people will forget that somewhere at the, that it, it will become just common if this is not common thing. So do, uh, do not forget the first point. The second point is uh, from, all, from my personal uh, experience, yeah, I've already lost uh, one friend who were fighting uh, on the East. Now in this minute, while we are speaking, my uh, another friend, he's 26 years old and uh, he's fighting, fighting with the gun in the most, in the most hot point on the map on Ukraine. Now in, in this minute, the, the fighting is going on there. So and the second point is to support the army of Ukraine. Really support them because there is the only tool that could stop the aggression of the tyranny uh, and of the, the, the aggression of Russia. Because the, 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 the only point that can stop the dictatorship by the, uh, by the reason of dictatorship is, uh, is the fighting against it. So how you, you can count, uh, how could you help the army? Uh, if you want to do so personally, I don't mean the, uh, regarding the, the, this event. Yeah, if you, somebody of you want to do this personally, you can uh, donate to the uh, official accounts of the National Bank of Ukraine or find uh, our fund that KSC has created. You could easily find it through the internet and donate there. Uh, we, we personally there gather this humanitarian and military aid and support our soldiers. And uh, the third point uh, that you could probably do that, uh, if you will just briefly look through the uh, Russian structure, the structure of Russian expert and of the uh, foreign exchange uh, revenue that comes to the Russia, you'll see that 26% comes from the uh, crude oil sales and 28% comes from the gas sales. And definitely the only working sanction that could stop the Russia in several months or several quarters that they will be just unable to finance this war is to uh is, is is the embargo is the embargo on oil and on the gas and what you can do as a student you have the social media you can you could share this opinion uh you can talk on it uh and by the little help of each individual just sharing the post in your social media the, the, uh, our, our, our together, our, our joint results will be able to be achievable. So uh, to sum up, I, I personally see three points. Uh, number one, do not forget. Number two, help the army. Number three, uh, as you can, share that the only way to stop Russia economically, the ability of Russia economically to finance the war is to provide the embargo of oil and gas from Russia. Yevhenia, do you want to add something? Actually, very important things were mentioned by Ilya and Lada, and uh, what I can add is concerning uh, about um, education, I guess SSE Riga and SSE can provide uh, Ukrainian students with their um, I guess I don't know or to set up such initiatives like um, some project about Ukrainians, about Ukrainian refugees, whatever. I would like to thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts and your stories. It's once again been hard to listen to. Um, and I hope that we can rebuild Ukraine together, all of us in here. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Vilma. Uh, Excellent. Thank you for the student views. Um, 
We are running a little bit late, I hope you excuse me, but I would like to just introduce you to two of the founders of Friends of KC. Uh, this is a Swedish ideal forening. You need actually three people to be able to register. Please come on stage, girls. This is Caroline Fast, Anna Maria Svan. Give them a big hand. This is the reason why we could actually, in such short time, put together this event, have a bank account, have an organisations number, very important here in Sweden. So, uh, looking forward, please get in touch with any of us here if you want to know more. How how can you help uh, the school in Kiev? How can we help academics? Uh, this is sort of the core of of friends of KC, but of course. Over time, I hope you come and visit the webpage, uh, friendsofkac.org. There you can send us an email saying that I would also like to become a member, because this is an open ideal forening. So you can all actually join and, and become a part of this organization and this effort going forward. So with this, I would just like to end here tonight. And we are going to continue for those online Thank you so much for joining. Uh, for those that have a few minutes left here in Stockholm, please join us for some drinks and snacks outside. Uh, and a big hand of applause to all of you that made this possible tonight. Thank you.